I will now open the floor for questions. You can put up your virtual hand. Um, let me just see if there were questions in the chat. Um, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Deirdre from the Dutch Embassy. And I was just wondering, uh, many of the projects that you mentioned are very interesting and also related to fields of work that we are interested in. And I was wondering if there's a possibility to for spin-off research to be done. So for example, on AI um, and art in Africa, if there would be the possibility to discuss, for example, if there's additional work that needs to be researched or collaborated on, whether we could um, collaborate on that. There's always room for additional work. <laughs> I can definitely say that. That sounds really good. We'd love that. We're actually building out a, a research group in the school uh, made up of honors and master's students that are producing quite a lot of work. We're just starting out with them. So it'd be amazing to, um, to, engage, to engage that further too. Um, I can share my contacts with you. And, yeah. Yes, maybe exchange a direct message in the chat. Um, Ms. Bachelor is actually the economic policy advisor, if I'm not mistaken, from the Embassy of the Netherlands. Um, so I, I wanted to welcome you also to this discussion forum. Any other questions? Oh, here is one from Sean Earl Harris uh, with the art department. What are the fields of digital art and NFTs? Um, yeah, so within the digital arts department, we dominantly focus on gaming, um, animation, and interactive media in different kinds of ways. Um, we don't have a program yet that looks specifically at NFTs, but we have research projects um, kind of with honors and master students that are engaging that. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a very new and quite complicated space, so we haven't quite decided whether or how we're going to be teaching it, um, but the digital arts aspects are very, very well covered within the digital arts department of the School of Arts. I hope that answers your question. Cool. <laughs> yeah, he says yes. <laughs> okay, any other questions? Well, please do continue to put your questions in the chat. Um, just specify that it is for Tegan Bristow. And uh, with that, I think we'll say thank you to Tegan and um, thank you. We will be seeing you online, hopefully in future again. Yes, I'll be staying on. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Right, our next speaker needs no introduction. He's one of those people. He is the much well-known and much loved vice chancellor of the University of Johannesburg. Um, he's uh, very much a thought leader on the fourth industrial revolution, uh, head of the presidential 4IR commission and author of many books, um, including textbooks that are cutting edge as well as books for the public, um, which includes Closing the Gap, which introduces and unpacks the fourth industrial revolution. Now, I'm not actually sure whether Prof has joined us yet. I think we can return to this question to, of Sean Earl Harris. He says, is it possible to collaborate with the arts department? Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, they, we have different public kind of public engaging and kind of into faculty and into institutional um, opportunities through the digital arts department to collaborate. Um, so it depends what Sean would like to do and where he is. Um, and yeah, they, we do do a lot of uh, kind of intersectional work or cross-sectional work, um, yeah. Excuse me, sorry, thank you for the time. I don't know if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the reason is that I have been doing NFTs since last year, and I'm looking at collaborators to bring this into the, let's say, more of a general public arena. 
not only how to do the NFT uh, basic uh, uh, design, well, not design, but, but implement, implementation. And again, looking at how the proceeds can be channeled straightly back into the society, where I'm hoping that the, the revenue will make a better uh, aspect within the arts and culture and other aspects of life. Now, I've been doing it for some time and I have a slight basic team putting together on all the required, and I say required platforms because there's many platforms from Discord, Clubhouse, et cetera, et cetera, how to promote your NFT and your artwork, get it onto OpenSea and, and looking at those ways to, to really push it. I've done a, a roadmap and a, a white paper on the process and I'm hoping to make these type of documents, um, let's say the basic roadmap or the, sorry, the basic standard operating procedure of how a freelancer or somebody in that line, um, like myself, who wants to enter into this field and become into the fourth IR can follow a document that will enable them in their basic arena to come into the uh, um, digital environment. And I'm looking for the higher uh, information within South Africa or those individuals who can collaborate in this because if we don't, well, I'm, I, I shouldn't say if we don't, I'm hoping that we can work together to bring the fourth IR right the way down to those on the ground because of the possibilities with any basic smartphone, you can interact within the metaverse uh, um, and operate within the digital environment. I thank you for your time. Oh, no, that's very interesting. And um, I think there's a lot of work happening um, in that space. And I think there's uh, there are a lot of people like you who are quite interested in the kind of opportunity for it to kind of come back into community so that the, the sort of profits of the of the cryptocurrencies come back to people who are making and people in those spaces. And there are a fair amount of um, projects that are kind of charity orientated and do so in very different ways, which are quite interesting. Um, I think I, the work that you are uh, writing down and I suppose what you're doing is kind of making a guidebook for how to promote and how to work within the NFT space as somebody just entering that space because it is quite confusing. Um, and there are lots of kind of barriers to entry surprisingly. And even though it's kind of said to be such a democratic um, uh, location, um, I mean, I think with the work that you're saying for, currently, because we're not running any courses and we don't have um, students actively working in that space, but it does fit into the work that we're doing around um, research around intermediaries and the gap uh, of, of intermediaries within that space. So if you want to just uh, drop me an email with uh, some of the, the uh, kind of guidebook stuff that you're looking at, we'd be very happy to note it in and include it in the kind of gap analysis work that we're doing around intermediaries and mapping that space. Um, based on what I'm currently doing, that's that's kind of where I would say uh, we would be able to collaborate with you. Um, yeah. Thank you, Tegan. Thank you. Um, Okay. I've got a question. Um, it seems to me that um, in the arts, there is, um, there has been uh, a growing tendency to, um, to, in to intellectualize, to talk about the work that um, artists are making and they talk about it themselves and they think about it themselves. Whereas, um, before or often, it has been um, an intuitive practice, more um, the, the formation of art through the process of making it and the intention of the artist, but quite often an unconscious um, intention. Could you, could you comment on that? 
Sure. I mean, I think it's it's a very interesting space that the sciences don't really understand, or it's often one of the topics that we engage when we, we speak to scientists and, and technical people, um, that there's a kind of mystery around the process of being creative and uh, kind of letting it essentially flow through you and you make in certain kinds of ways and you create knowledge actually in certain kinds of ways that aren't common to the kind of empirical ways of making knowledge. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of work in the School of Arts, which actually Brett Piper um, has been helping lead around creative practice as a, as, a, as a methodology, essentially, and a knowledge forming location. Um, oh, sorry, I muted you accidentally. Can you unmute? Yeah. So, that's okay apologies <laughs> that's all right um now i was just saying that specifically within uh african culture we often forget that the pro that the creative processes and cultural processes are often largely communal um so if you're looking at a kind of cultural communal practice around uh, a dance or around a kind of ceremonial format there's knowledge that's deeply embedded within those practices um and deeply embedded in the act of using your body to evoke and perform and uh, do things with with that you know there's knowledge there there's knowledge in the body there's knowledge in the mind there's knowledge in a community so one of the things that we do um is kind of with the focus on creative led research is is to unpack that where is knowledge formed how is knowledge formed and um, without it becoming empirical um the post the idea is not for, for it not to become empirical but to rather speak about it as it is and to evoke um the knowledge and the and the, uh, the kind of outputs as they are in their own kind of location essentially um yeah so if you look at kind of creative led and uh, practice led research you'll find a lot of that work happening in the arts. Right, thank you. Sure. Um, another question. Um, hey, Dr. Bristow, with the Fakukesi Festival, you mentioned about marketing. Can you please indicate on how this is done? Oh, marketing. <laughs> marketing is like a whole world on its own. Um, so Fakukesi Festival uses a lot of social media marketing. Um, so we, we really work a lot on promoting work of artists promoting the work that we do through social media and um, there are different kinds of strategies that um, take place here um, you know everything from like making videos to engaging certain kinds of communities um, if you wanted to know i'd say take a social media marketing course because that's it's quite complex i myself don't do it uh, we do we have people who do that for us um, that we hire in um, but i yeah i think one of the most important things about marketing is uh, especially from a Fakugesi perspective, and people often refer to that when they think about Fakugesi and engage us on Fakugesi, is the, the message that we put across. And very, very early on, it was really significant for us that it was an African-focused cultural and technology encounter. Um, so we made that really part of our message and, and how, we, how we interact um, in our marketing. Yeah. Thank you. That was from uh, Dr. Dimakatsu um, Ndal. I hope that answered your question. <laughs> okay. Um, Bonga, you will tell us when uh, Professor Marwala has joined us. Apologies, we uh, he's only due to arrive now. So I've, <laughs> I've jumped the gun. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I also just went quite fast, thinking that we'd have a, a more discussion afterwards. And I also was so general about the, the things that I was talking about. And I think might also be quite new for, um, for a lot of people in the room, especially if they come from a kind of technology and science background. Um, yeah. Oh, I see another question coming in um, from Lucy. Um, has the 2019 Presidential Commission contributed enough towards the advancement of creative economy up to this point and given its earlier responses? Um, so uh, I, I would know. <laughs> um, it hasn't. So it's very much in process um, as far as I understand it. The, um, the Presidential Commission was really about kind of looking at 4IR and the needs between government, industry and universities and how that might be managed. Um, our response was 
post the, the presidential commission um, and to the early kind of strategic interventions from the commission um, in kind of informing that strategic committee what needs to happen and what we are doing from a creative and cultural industry perspective, um, which is not well understood. Um, yeah. I hope that answers your question. Okay. Yes. <laughs> We're very much in process um, at the moment, yeah. yeah. I found it very interesting what you said about um, 3D printing. Um, and it's, it's a technology that has, um, I think, great potential to be used in the, um, in the artistic, the creative space. But there must be the barriers to entry there that are enormous. Can you talk about that a bit? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, actually, the sort of initial, the barrier to entry on actual 3D printing at a, at a kind of like really low level is actually quite um, low. Um, it's quite easy to actually even build your own 3D printer. There's lots of tutorials online. I think you just need to be like technically able. Um, the sort of myriad of maker spaces across the, the country are there to support um, that kind of work, but as it, as we said in in the um, kind of uh, in the presentation, those maker spaces tend to be in urban spaces. But you will find them in Durban, Cape Town, Johannesburg, Pretoria, um, Swane, but you won't find them in kind of rural spaces. So three D printing itself is not that hard to do. It is a little bit expensive, um, but I think one of the things that um, that is really difficult and where the kind of next leap needs to happen is how do you go from kind of desktop 3D printing and prototyping work to actually taking it into kind of large scale um, rapid manufacture. Um, and then also things like architecture. I know this is something that UJ has been looking at, but um, looking at architecture in a 3D printing scale. So like really large scale, really kind of um, production orientated, uh, commercially orientated 3D printing is, is not well um, developed in the country. But the sort of entry level understanding, learning, kind of code block aspect of it is actually quite accessible um yeah i know that's good to hear um are, are there artists in south africa who are working in that medium now yeah a number of them um so there's there's um oh, what's her name i think her name is leah marie now potentially um who does amazing work in 3d printing there's also a lot of people who are working with 3d printing at ceramics um so there's a makerspace in durban that is really building out that a lot and also in saturn actually um so there's artists working it, with it in different ways um and you can 3d print anything you can 3 i mean the nstf awards were 3d printed in um was it uh uh what was it printed in? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Titanium. Um, and you know, so we could see quite quickly how, how that how that's done. So you can 3D print in almost everything, which is quite amazing. Um, and a lot of artists are very excited about the prospects. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, that's very exciting. Um, this condition oh, yeah. moodly. Um, does Fitz offer a degree with majors in digital art and computer science? Can an undergraduate student major in digital art? Uh, yes, you can. So the we uh, the digital arts um, undergraduate program is actually a collaborative program with the School of Engineering in the Built Environment. So not computer science, but with information engineering. Um, and there's a game design degree, which you can take either from engineering or from the arts side. Um, some of the courses are, are shared and some of the courses are specific to engineering or specific to the arts. So it really depends on the, the student themselves. And this is our full undergraduate degree um, on how which area they want to enter into or how they can enter into it or how they would like to leave it. Um, so it's really exciting. It's one of the I think one of the only kind of cross faculty degrees um, in the country um, that looks at engineering and creative practice together. And yes, it's an undergraduate degree. <laughs> and we offer postgraduate um, degrees in honors level and master's level and PhD as well. Uh, I, I was going to write a message there. Um, yes. Jeanette and, and, and Willia. Um, because of the fourth IR and it's a chance where, and we know that, you know, South Africa is not really catching up, but it can uh, really participate as an active uh, participant in, the, in, in what is happening now. It is to a certain extent, but not as wide uh, uh, distributed into the general uh, community. 
as, as a whole. And I am looking, and, and my aim is to bring this knowledge and the technology into that sphere. Because once again, if we're not um, known about the, 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 the advantages of the basic technology that you do have on your phone, um, we will be lagging behind. And as it is certain scenarios or planned scenarios where cryptocurrencies and these other technological uh, advances will be the mainstream of our communities in the future, my desire with other individuals is to looking at ways locally within the South African theater, continentally on the whole of Africa, and, a, and in a global sense also right the way through the blockchain of seeing how we can disseminate information, working together to better all our lives. Now, this fourth, the, 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 the technology is coming together for us to do this. And which I see that uh, working as in a group, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 a team, um, uh, it is easier to, to achieve all our aims. And that is what we are forming now. When I'm looking at this through um, a number of my, my objectives to looking at how and what is planned in society now through the intellectual uh, institutions and how again we can work and collaborate to bring it to a wider audience um, right now, because if you look at the other parts of the world, um, they are quite advanced. NFTs are used in many, many facets of their society. And, you know, it is not just, uh, yeah, quite a few countries are taking them up. Um, even these countries here within their own countries, bringing in the cryptocurrency ready for the, or their own cryptocurrency, for and bringing in the NFTs again and the smart contracts, which is really taking over a lot of the, the smart contracts, which is taking a lot of the legal and other aspects of life, and it will be a main uh, dominant in the future. So what I'm asking here is that if there are individuals who would like to collaborate to look at ways that we can bring this to fruition, through certain projects, if it is those within your own countries or your own towns, and again, um, bringing one or two major projects to, 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 to the media's and to the public's attention. I thank you for your time. Thank you very much, um, Sean Earl Harris. It's um, a very good question. How do we actually, well, um, uh, what you said among others is just how do we bring these technologies closer to the people and um, not keep it in our intellectual institutions? I think that's a very important question. Um, Tegan, would you like to comment on that? Um, yeah, I mean, I think Sean is basically throwing open an invitation there to everybody in the room, um, which is very exciting and great to see in a discussion like this where, you know, what, and as you were talking, Sean, I was thinking, you know, who, who is everybody in the room? <laughs> um, what are they doing? Um, are they more from the science side? Are they from the creative side? Um, are they working in different kinds of creative industries that they feel that are not being met? Um, by the four R spaces, um, how do we work with them to engage that? Um, so for instance, like if you're a bead worker and working with uh, beautiful bead making, um, what does that mean for you within the space um, and other kinds of creative artists? Um, yeah, so I think, I mean, I'm quite excited about the fact that you're, you're bold enough to step into the room and say, uh, you know, join me and let's find a way to, to do this. Mm -hmm.